Hey everybody, Edo here. Let's talk fonts. To start, if you're a game publisher, a board game publisher, or a Kickstarter creator, let me ask you a question. Do you know what fonts you are using in your game? Do you know the name of them? Do you know the fonts used uh, in your logo, on your box, in your rule book? All of them. Do you know right now those fonts? Think about it. Take a second. Really think. Do you know? Then, let's go one step further. Do you know if they're licensed? Do you know if they have been paid for or properly attributed, or if they're bona fide, free, commercial use fonts? Keep thinking. So, certainly, it was the case for me. I did not know the answer to that question. And uh, this video starts with a story. Story being, out of the blue, seemingly, um, I got reached out to by an individual who brought to my attention or believed that I, or Pencil First Games, or really this game, uh, an older game, was using an unlicensed font and essentially was saying, hey, do you have a license for this font? Now, in my case, um, I, I don't do all of the uh, box design. I mean, you know, uh, I work with graphic designers and the like, and so I wasn't sure the answer to the question. I certainly knew I didn't know the answer to the question, but perhaps um, I did have a license for the font, or the individual had a license for the font. And uh, in the past, I had paid for, for font licenses for, with a variety of graphic designers, so I thought, yeah, perhaps I do. But hey, I don't know. Uh, the person was agitated, the person was aggressive, but I said, just chill out, let me go find out the answer to that question and get back to you. And by the way, like, what are we talking about? How angry are you? And while I was getting the answer to that question, I proceeded to do a little research on what type of exposure I was doing, uh, going to be dealing with uh, in terms of, you know, copyright and fonts and all that good stuff. And I learned, I, I learned a bit there, uh, and it was certainly a fun journey. But uh, as it would turn out, the graphic designer had not secured uh, that, uh, that license. Now, in this case, this was a weird one, and I'll talk about this a little bit, but this was a weird one where rather than saying it costs X or saying this is my what's okay, this is not okay, this group or this individual, more of a group, but whatever, said free for use, but contact me, email me if you want to use it commercially. Most people don't do it that way. Most people give one thing or the other, or link to a, a open source licensing thing, but uh, not in this case. And in this case, without you know going into it too deeply, um, you know, the graphic designer just you know was busy, sort of thought it was in a set, went on. Also, uh, many of these fonts live in worlds amongst other fonts, some of which are free, some of which aren't, all of which are being promoted and pushed towards you. So, I mean, there's a lot going on there. But nevertheless, I found myself in a position, Pencil First Games in a position, where uh, we absolutely were using a font without a license. And we're being asked about that by the, the licensee or, or by the person who owned it. And so, you know, um, there's some different philosophies on, on, on how people want to approach things. Some people are more aggressive about things. Some people are more passive. From my perspective, you know, I, 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 I talked with the other individual. I, you know, we, we worked through it. Um, and ultimately, I paid for a license that covered the past and the future and all that good stuff. And for sure, it was way more expensive than had it just been the case that I properly licensed the font. Now, one of the interesting things here is also that typically, as a creator or a publisher, when you sign a contract 
uh, with a uh, graphic designer or with a um, illustrator or whomever, it says something like, you, you, it's called a warranty. You warrant that you have proper licenses for anything you're going to use, or if you don't, you will get it. Um, and also that if something happens, you're responsible for what that happens. But if you're a publisher or you're small business, I just, I want, I, I, I this is the, the, like, ultimately don't, don't live in that world. Like, don't live in the world where you're like, if something goes wrong, I'll just, like, try to get a lawsuit against, an, like, an individual, like, a small, like, a graphic design. Like, the amount of effort to have gotten into a fight over, like, the exact number of units. So, like, I could have been like, well, look, you know, it should be, it's based on the volume printed, and this was a small print run. We never, we never printed the game again. Like, it was, like, I could have tried to, like, get aggressive or argumentative, and it just would have taken a ton of time with the person who owned the license. Where the reality was, we should we should have gotten the license. We didn't. Like, let's fix it. Like, let's fix it. It wasn't intentional. Let's fix it. Uh, but the same thing with the, the 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 graphic designer in the context of it's sort of like, yeah, sure, I could go some elaborate process to try to recoup this this relatively small amount of money, but it just would the amount of effort and time there. And and I think what I've learned and, and want to proceed with in this video is that the best thing to do is know the answers to those questions I just asked you, which you don't. There are so few of you who know the answer to those questions. There's no way, because you just don't. So what did, what, what, what do you, what did Once Burned Ed do? Well, what Once Burned Ed do is I created a spreadsheet and actually I worked with, um, uh, this isn't the same graphic designer, but I have another graphic designer, Ken Robinson, um, who has um, worked through uh, sort of, she's worked on enough of the titles that she like has access to a lot of our files and, and, and Pennsylvania games. And, and basically I was like, can you please help me audit every single game we've ever done? And this is, I paid for her time, but hey, can we go through and can we list all the fonts we've ever used. I created a spreadsheet, and I play a lot of games here. Every single game, going back to Liftoff, what fonts were used? And were they licensed or not? And one, went through everything, uh, and realized, holy moly, we use a lot of fonts. We use a lot of different fonts in a lot of different games, because games, unlike print media, you know, they have different themes, they have different things going on, you're using a lot of fonts. Exhaustive, box, logo, rule book, all of it. Then, do we have a license? Do we know the answer to that? And so what I had to do was then proceed through each and every single font and look it up and figure it out. And then, because the reality is not every one of them was licensed the way it needed to be, go through and proceeded to pay what amounts to typically 35 bucks per font, like not a lot of money. Um, it's different depending on what you're doing, but like none of these were hugely expensive, but went through and made sure that for each game, each edition, all those things that we had paid for the fonts um, and worked through it. And I, I involved reaching out to old graphic designers, old friends being like, hey, remember that thing you did? Do you remember what you used? And some of it was like excavation, but went through the process of exhaustively knowing what fonts were used, and then, not only that they were licensed or not, what license, where was it, who was paid for it, blah, blah, and I took either screenshots or downloads and basically created this spreadsheet which maps to a folder that has images of all the, all the, uh, all the licenses, which I highly recommend doing. Um, along the way, I learned some lessons that I want to share, including the main lesson, which is know your fonts. Use your fonts. Know your fonts. Um, one lesson that I, I, I also I, I, I learned is just that, like anything else, I think it's important to understand that fonts are art. And this isn't like a my call, but like really looking at it, it's like you know what. And and it, with working with graphic designers and just talking to people, I think to some degree people pick up fonts as if they're. Um, colors or, or, or material, like there's uh, the use of fonts I find is 
doesn't carry the weight of using art. No one's going to like go, I mean, this isn't true because some people have done this, but I, I think a, a much smaller amount of people are going to go online and be like, that's a great piece of art. I'm going to chuck it into the game. Like, I'm going to put that on one of my cards. It's like, holy, of course you're not going to do that. But for whatever reason, because the way that I think they've been productized and sold and become accessible and are fast ways to bring character to your, to your game, people grab fonts not like they're technical, not like they're art. And they have a license because of their art and their property. And I think that's important to realize. And it's important to realize that when a graphic is not, I don't want to generalize, but when somebody uses a special font, uses a font that's not in your typical like font kits, um, they are doing so because that font is allowing a creative advantage to the product. It's making it so that something that looked normal looked exciting or big or bold or different. And that's the value of the font and that's the value of someone's time and creativity. So I really, I really think not rushing that, um, but making sure you're, you appreciate your fonts. It's important to appreciate it by knowing which ones they are. <laughs> Start there. Start there. Okay. What else? So that's, that's one. And I really, you know, again, a lot of this was transactional, but it really, over the time as I, because I, 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 looking up every one of them, there, they, you know, I would say there's like, it's a spectrum, but there's like small fonts that are like clearly made by like some kid who had fun with it on a weekend or some guy or some, like, I don't want to, but like, are like hobbyist font people who made three fonts and never made another font. Like, this isn't their profession. They had some fun. They learned about fonts and they made some wacky fonts. And some of those fonts come into board games. But like, you know, like clearly this person made two fonts 20 years ago. There's like that kind of font. Then there's like this middle range boutique font, which is very ornate, very particular, very interesting, but coming from an individual who makes these and, and, and continue to make them, but isn't a gigantic company. And then you've got like the huge font engine companies that are making fonts for programs and software and publishing magazines, right? Um, and I think in board games, you use some of these higher fonts, which you should understand. But I think you, a lot of people who are getting like trying to make a cool logo or do something end up in that middle zone. And so, um, so in learning about all those stuff, I, I, I learned about the individuals. Like I ended up looking up, if, if they worked on a font I used, I looked them up. Um, and it gave me some perspective there. Okay, what other useful information can I give you? So, one, know your fonts. Know the licensing. Two, in terms of licensing, there are some different versions of it. One, they're absolutely, and you're gonna like, there's font spring, my fonts, the font, Free fonts, fonts for life. There's like 17 different places that fonts are sold. 1,700 different places fonts are sold. And all of them basically list the fonts you buy it and you can buy. But like, so like the platform selling it is rarely, it's just like a middleware font set. Um, occasionally a creator will take you to their own personal site, but the mass majority are on these sort of service websites. Um, but even on them, there are ones that are bona fide, free, free use, commercial use, do whatever you want use. I was just having fun. And you'll find those. <clears throat> and, and to the extent that they are explicit. Some of those, uh, that's called category A. Category B is like category A, but includes a little line like, please give me credit. Maybe one like donate to my Patreon or donate, do a donation. Do it. You're using it. Do it. Put the Pay five bucks, pay 10 bucks, it was a donation. Why not? Why not? Somebody's saving somebody time. Anyway, three, and there's many more, but just like in the categories I saw. Then there's, um, there's a number of font open source, not library, but like open source language contracts that are like, oh well, whatever acronyms. But basically these are like, understandings around commercial use. And usually these are more particular in saying, 
they're just, it's like the free one, but there's a lot more legalese in it. And they're like, it's like, you can use it, but you can't distribute it within your software. You can't edit it or change it and try to resell it as your own. So it's like, it's mine. Don't like add three things and then try to sell a font. Uh, typically to say, give credit in a reasonable space, use it on a website, make a note, whatever. Um, and some of these things might be like, oh, you're not doing that right now. We'll do it in the next edition. Um, um, that's that there's so there's some middle ground there and also in there in that middle ground somewhere in there is the ones that say things like if you want to learn more email me there's no information it means email them uh, and some of these require you to like the font site will say it's probably this but you should look so like a lot of them require you to double click down into the creator and to their personal site so you can't just like assume the font site is totally like make sure it's clear in the notes associated with the user um and then there are just fonts that you have to pay uh and some have broad like full uses but a lot of them the, the bigger ones are like no you're paying for desktop you're paying for the amount of people at your company who can use it you're paying for like they're very specific and you're buying also another note about fonts just to be clear uh, you know, Times New Roman might not, it isn't a font, it's, it's probably not, anyway, but like, um, let's just say Times New Roman bold, Times New Roman italic, Times New Roman thin, Times New Roman strong. Those are all different fonts. They're all different fonts. So if in your game you're using A, B, C, like bold, italics, and normal, you're actually using three fonts, not one. If you select something different, from the drop-down menu, it's a different font. If you install it and you say install font and it's like a different button, you have to install another one, it's a different font. Though some of those actually can do it as a group, I think. But suffice to say, you drop down and then you like hit the B button or the italic button, they're different fonts. Um, then in addition, there are these um, font groupings you can have access to. If you own Photoshop and you are part of Cloud, Creative Cloud, you get their font library as part of what you're paying for. And you're paying a lot of money for it. Um, you probably have rights to those fonts. Many of the fonts that you'll find on your computer already are part of uh, font families on, on your Mac or otherwise that give commercial license. It seemed to be the case that some of those things where fonts are in and out change over time, like maybe it's a 10 year deal or whatever. I don't think it ever hurts to make sure the font is in there. Now, there's a, it's a little bit more gray and if somebody knows specifically, correct me, but like to some degree, you know, if a graphic designer has a license for a font and selling their work to you, like, that license grants them the ability to create and generate work. To some degree, to the extent your your font is being used in lots of places and a part of your business, or you're taking that font that was provided here and using it elsewhere, like I, in generally speaking, it's probably good to also have your own license to a font. It's not a requirement, but I feel like there are some, it, I, I this would require more specific legal sleuthing. For It absolutely is the case that a graphic designer can have the rights to something and tell you a piece of art that they've made with the rights they. But um, I just generally found when it was like, yeah, you know, this person bought a license, I have a seat, and it was 30 bucks. I was like, you know what, let's just, I'll do that. Um, and so part of looking at the font use is, uh, is being aware of that. So there's these different licenses. And again, they're all cheaper if you pay what you're supposed to pay in the beginning. Um, what else did I learn? One thing I learned is if you're not careful, you're going to end up using a lot of fonts for no good reason. No good reason. As somebody who's looking at it, I, I, like generally speaking, over time I've become much better at saying like, I've got a header font and I've got a body font and I'm using those fonts and I'm gonna be consistent. But, you know, I, I look at a lot of Kickstarter, I look at a lot of creators, a lot of people like are just throwing fonts everywhere. 
everywhere. I can make this header different. This is a new page, new character name. I want something icy over here. I want something fiery over here. Like, what killed me, and, and, and I know that as a creator, I probably push for that at times. I probably say to the graphic designer, hey, how can we make this pop more? Well, if pop more is changing the font, you're taking on an, another, another license to be aware of. And the one that got me was on one of the boxes, and big shout out to Kim for doing the just like work of like looking at every font used in all the PSD font. Like you can't, this is not easy. It was a, you know, hours and hours and hours to do this. But on one of the boxes, for whatever reason, maybe it was to shrink size. One of the fonts, like it probably was we shrank a font, which was the normal font, and it wasn't legible enough. And I said, hey, could you make that copyright or this thing over here more legible? Like this little piece of text over here. And whoever the graphic designer was did that by changing the font to a font that read better, smaller in just those two sentences. Two, three, it was like, I got like three word, three sentences, or like, like one phrase with this one font. And that's the only place it appears anywhere on the product. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I really think that's it. I, I, again, I, I sort of debated whether or not I want to do this video mainly because like, you know, I did something wrong and I'm talking about that thing I did that was wrong. But I, you know, I, I do strongly believe it was a mistake. I do strongly believe we've righted the mistake. But most importantly, I think it's easy to make and I think there's a certain amount of lack of appreciation and understanding for it. And so I, 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 I wanted to make this video if, if and only if every single person who is a publisher today or a creator asks that question. What fonts am I using in my game? Do I know them? Do I have license to it? What's the answer to that question? The answer to that question is no, I don't know. Go find out. Go make it a per point of finding out. And if the answer to that question is, I know, but I don't know if it's licensed, go find out. And if the answer is, it's not licensed, get the license. Go fix it. Fix it. Fix it. You know, oh, look, look, let's get the license. And, uh, you know, if I save somebody a headache <laughs> down the road, that's fantastic. But um, I think it's also a place where people should, as a whole, as an industry, just do better and take it more seriously. I've spoken to a few um creator publisher friends and ask them similar questions and they went and did similar research and found out similar things. Anyway, I hope this was useful. Thanks. <laughs> Later. Hey everybody, Edo here and thanks for watching Gaming with Edo. Reviews over here on this playlist, League and Insider videos over here on this one. Subscribe, share, all that good stuff, but most importantly, play some great games. Thanks. Bye.